Okay, and then that leaves us with 20 on the record in 2022, CR 133, State of Kansas versus Gregory Brian Kelly. The state appears by and through Greenwood County Attorney Jill Gillette. The defendant, Gregory Kelly, appears in person and pro se. Mr. Kelly, are you still wanting a jury trial or do you want an opportunity to try to negotiate a disposition with the county attorney? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. I am willing to talk to the prosecutor, but I don't think we're going to come to a result. Is that a, you have your mind made up or you're open to thoughts if, you, if she discusses it with you? That is correct, that I'm open to anything she might say. Very well. Ms. Gillette, are you, he has uh, signed a waiver and continued to represent himself throughout. Are you available and willing to talk to him this morning about possible resolution? Uh, if he wants to talk, I've made an offer before, which he continues to not want. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to put the two of you in a breakout room and have you hopefully keep open minds. And, and uh, Savannah, if you would put Miss Gillette and Mr. Kelly in a breakout room, please. In the meantime, Miss Gillette, Mr. Kelly, any success? On uh, negotiation? No, Judge. No. No, we weren't able to come to agreement. Okay. Ms. Gillette, let's go on the record in Kelly again. We are on the record in 2022, CR 133, State of Kansas versus Gregory Brian Kelly. Please announce appearances. I'm here, Judge. All right, Gregory Kelly appearing in person and pro se. Ms. Jill Gillette, County Attorney, are you here? Um, Ms. Gillette is on the record with us in 2022 CR 133, State of Kansas versus Gregory Brian Kelly. Mr. Kelly's case is now the prime for Wednesday, but the dilemma now is that Judge Hart has a Greenwood County case announced for prime also. So I suppose that puts us as an alternate maybe to whatever he has. Ms. Gillette, what do you have in front of Judge Hart this week? Uh, currently it is scheduled for an aggravated domestic battery case with multiple other charges that have been, to, you know, that are between mm -hmm. the two cases, two cases consolidated for trial. The other one is violation of a PFA. Um, that is also scheduled to possibly start Wednesday. This case is a backup to that case. Um, so if you want us to appear in case the other case works out, I was going to call Nika Cummings and confirm today on everything um, with okay. that. So, All right. Well, Mr. Kelly, it sounds like there's a possibility your jury trial may go Wednesday. So you'll need to be prepared and at the Greenwood County Courthouse between 8.30 and no later than 8.45 Wednesday, Judge Hart and Ms. Gillette will be in the jury trial in front of you, but if for some reason that would resolve itself in plea as they often do or some other disposition, the jury will be ready and waiting. So are you quite certain that you wanna represent yourself in front of a jury on Wednesday? Yeah, I am, Judge. Uh, also, if I might add, uh, there has been some new uh, evidence in this case that has uh, came about, and I am in the process of uh, checking into that, and uh, basically, I, I'm accusing the prosecution of uh, following, fo filing a uh, fictitious uh, charging document. And I, I, uh, so I don't know where we're going to go with that, but uh, I have uh, hired a uh, uh, forensic handwriting specialist at, at the moment. He's supposed to be acquiring handwriting samples, and I'm not sure how this case can go forward until we get this matter figured out. Okay. First of all, with all due respect, sir, what are you talking about? Okay. 
the Secretary of State has confirmed that the notary's signature that is on the charging document is not on their file. In other words, it is a forgery. Somebody forged the notary's signature uh, declaring the prosecutor's oath. You could say that again. The Secretary of State uh, Secretary in the State, State of Kansas says that whoever signed that document was not a legal notary in the state of Kansas. Correct. So you're making the argument in your criminal case that Ms. Gillette did not file a legal petition, a legal verified petition or notarized position, petition. Uh, I, I'm saying fraudulent. Well, I, I, at this point, I am challenging the prosecutor's, uh, prosecutor's jurisdiction. I feel she has no standing due to the fact, knowingly or unknowingly, she filed a federal document that was falsified. First of all, she did not file a federal document. We're not in federal court. We are in Greenwood County District Court. Second of all, she is the legally elected authorized prosecutor for Greenwood County. And if you're and she did sign the complaint and information filed against you. I don't believe she did. I think that well, let me call it up. I've seen her. I, I'm no I'm not designated with credentials as an expert handwriting analyst, but I will tell you, I've seen this woman's signature so many times in the last several years. Let me, let me pull up that document and look at it. Yeah. Judge, if I may, this uh, is- let me, just, let me look at your signature. Yeah. This is actual original with the original ink on it. That's Miss Arlena's signature in blue ink. This is my signature in black ink. I can attest that is my signature. I definitely know that's Arlene's signature and Arlene signed it in my offices. So I know that that's her actual signature and it's not forged. And then in addition to that, this is the state of Kansas Secretary of State's notary search I've completed today. Arlene C. Edwards is a bona fide notary. There's her expiration date. She is registered, yes. August 30th of 24. And she was commissioned August 30th of 2020. There's her commission number. She is a bona fide notary. It's our actual signatures. Judge, she is in fact registered with the Secretary of State in Kansas. So therefore, if she is registered, her signature is on file. And I have a letter saying from the Secretary of State, that says that the signature presented on that document is not on their file, not in their file. So therefore, it only stands to reason that it is someone else's signature. Okay, I have seen Arlene Edwards' signatures. She can have her log in. She'll testify that's her signature. I mean, no, I I know <laughs> Miss I know Miss Edwards and Miss Gillette's signatures. Again, with the untrained eye, but having seen them every day on multiple documents for several years, uh, Miss Edwards, in fact, even more than Miss Gillette's because she was authorizing signatures for Mr. Lee, the predecessor to Miss Gillette. If you, who did you talk to in the office? Is this someone you can have come down as a witness? I, I sent in a a form that you're required for authentication and apostles and that they re, they responded to that form that I've been in. Okay, well, I don't know that you've actually formally filed a motion, but nothing you've said convinces me that legal grounds would disqualify this case from going further to trial or disqualify Ms. Gillette from prosecuting it. Now, if you want to bring down a witness and, and present them, you can do so. But what, what bearing would that have? The issues for the jury, Mr. Kelly, 
will be count one. Did you on or about the 10th day of August, 2022 in Greenwood County, Kansas, uh, unlawfully and intentionally possess an hallucinogenic drug to wit THC and or marijuana after having a prior conviction for the same in Labette, is that Labette County or Labette, Colorado? That's see, you know, Labette County? Yes, Kansas. Okay. And then in count two, and that's, the jury's going to have to decide if the state can present the elements of that. And then they're going to have to decide the elements of unlawful possession of drug paraphernalia in count two. They're, the state's alleging that on or about the 10th day of August, 2022 in Greenwood County, Kansas, you did unlawfully and intentionally possess drug paraphernalia, specifically marijuana roaches, which I understand are tobacco, marijuana, tobacco, and rolling papers. So it'd be the rolling papers uh, for the purpose of either storing, containing, concealing, injecting, ingesting, inhaling, or otherwise introducing a controlled substance into the human body. So those in counts one and two, then you've got count three, whether you were operating with insurance on your vehicle and whether you had a valid tag. Those are the charges. Those are the things that, that you would have to be, uh, if you wanted to present a defense, you'd have to be answering to. But I don't know whether. I feel, I feel as though if, if, she, if, in fact, the charging document was falsified, mm -hmm. then therefore she would have no standing in this matter okay uh, oh, would, it finding... not, would it not at the very least be a conflict of interest judge i am filing or i am finding that there is no conflict of interest i'm finding that it is a valid document and that we will proceed so on the evidentiary yes. merit now you can reserve your right to appeal my decisions, you're welcome to do that. And I will note that you have made those objections to proceeding. But uh, you're, if, if I, in fact, I, can prove that it is a falsified document, would that not, would that not be, you know, would she lose her standing at that point? I mean, I understand you're saying you well, don't want it is falsified, but I'm asking if it was. We're going to proceed on the charges. If you prevail, that's that. If Ms. Gillette prevails on the charges, you can file whatever grounds you feel are appropriate for appeal and take those up with the Kansas Court of Appeals, sir. Yeah. All right. So that being said, you'll be ready for trial uh, on the merits tomorrow if we proceed. Are you asking me if I am? I'm asking if you're prepared, yes. I don't feel that I am because I feel that I, I need to further investigate my alleged accusation against the prosecutor's office. Okay, your position is noted and uh, I've overruled it and we're going to proceed then. So be here Wednesday at no later than 8.45 ready for jury trial. All right. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. You may go, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, Missy, I think if we go off YouTube for this last hearing, I think folks would...